We are here with Rob Gehorsen, uh, president of uh, Forterra, which is uh, a leading developer of enterprise-oriented online worlds. Um, I met uh, Robert the first time in London at uh, the Virtual Worlds Forum, and uh, there was a, something that he said that really um, I found very interesting. So I thought during this brief conversation I would go back and, and, and ask him to get into a little more detail about the remark, which basically consisted in, in the fact that uh, the Parverse, the online representation of uh, our planet, the Earth, or the mirror world, as it is also called, in time could get not only as rich, but actually richer in information content than uh, the physical world itself. So, Robert, uh, tell us a, a little bit about this and uh, uh, how, uh, how this remark uh, impacts uh, the way for Terra uh, sees its task uh, today and in the future. Sure. So, as you know, we spend a lot of time developing applications based in virtual worlds for people to do real work, whether it's learning, training, or actual collaboration. So you need to be able to represent the environments that they work in, which, um, you know, for many people it may be an office, but in other cases it may be out in the field somewhere. And so we're interested in the proper representation uh, of, of the world and of the information they need to operate in it. And I think um, you know, I think actually when I spoke at the, at the conference, I referred to a term which I believe was coined by uh, Kevin Kelly, uh, Stuart Brankle, Zillionics, which refers to the growth in data that's coming from sensors around the world. And most, uh, some of that may be video, but some of it may be, uh, uh, you know, bio or chem or seismic information, but there's data coming from everywhere. And some of it goes to a specific location and it's just used for a specific purpose. But what if you could actually organize large chunks of that kind of information into a virtual world environment so that not only did you see the world, uh, you know, maybe as we do through uh, Avatar's eyes as if we were just people walking around, but you had different layers of abstraction that be could be called upon, um, either, either different sensor data or seeing things in different phases of time, which I think is a very important uh, aspect. So you could say, I'm at this location now, here's what it looks like today, let's go back a year, what did it look like then? Let's do simulation, let's see what it might be under different conditions six months from now. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree, and, and of course uh, Zillionics, the collection of data from sensors, uh, is important when we are growing onto our environment with uh, an intensity and uh, with a density of our impact that requires a much uh, higher level of understanding. Um, as long as people were scattered and our civilization did not have a lot of impact, uh, we could uh, go along and, and pretend that we understood and, and were able to read the world. But, but now, uh, both uh, our urban living, our technological civilization, and um, uh, our acquired safeties uh, are such that we cannot afford not to have a more, not to have a deeper understanding and not to have a more efficient means of acting upon this understanding. So, online worlds are certainly a great way for dense uh, data representation. Right, and that's only really the first part of it, because um, getting that data in into um, a representation, whether it's visualization or other abstraction, that's meaningful, um, is useful, but what's really then become useful, and what, what the virtual worlds enable is the collaboration between um, distributed groups to make sense of it and to problem solve or to to operate or to practice or rehearse whatever they're going to do and so um, while one might imagine aggregating a lot of data and putting it on one person's workstation for one person to work on that's really barely the first step it's really the idea that groups of people could then come together and do that work um, you are uh, of course uh, concentrated as uh, Forterra on 
uh, enterprise customers, uh, but uh, from enterprise applications, which are the first because they are mo the most uh, uh, capable uh, customers to implement expensive uh, applications, uh, these things uh, tend to percolate down the uh, economic uh, pyramid. Um, so today in, in online worlds we have this um, disconnect. Uh, there are very popular uh, consumer worlds and uh, there are companies like Forterra uh, talking to enterprise customers. Uh, what is your forecast? Uh, when is there gonna be a, a, an SMB right. um, oh, so that's offering? A, that's a very interesting question. So. That small, somewhere between the professional edition and the small to medium business edition, yeah. I think is really an opportunity for um, a new type of service, basically. So we talk about enterprise worlds and we tend to focus on the large organization and their constellation of partners um, and a solution that is hosted behind the, you know, their firewall. But um, there are clouds out there that are useful for business. And one might imagine, um, it's quite a visual image virtual worlds that come out of the cloud uh -huh. and um, can are accessible to the small organization that otherwise really doesn't have the IT resources they just want the application mm -hmm. and so I think that is coming um, soon in the next year or two yeah okay well thank you very much for your uh, interesting remarks oh thank you <laughs> okay.